Hey everybody. Um, so first thing before I start, do you remember I talked about the Brave browser? Uh, the Brave browser, it's like a crypto sort of using browser, basically. So the people who made the Brave browser have tied in with a cryptocurrency called BAT, B-A-T, Basic Attention Token. And if, here we go, I'll go to it here, just uh, you type in Brave um, browser, let's do that, and it'll come to brave.com. And if you just go there, here's the Brave browser. If you just um, click here, download Brave. If you could do me a favor, I know it's an extra layer of hassle, but if you could watch my videos whilst you're using the Brave browser, then um, basically anyone who uses the Brave browser, these people give a certain amount of their crypto free to anyone who downloads the browser. And if you watch my videos whilst using the Brave browser, um, Brave will send me some of their tokens. And it's kind of a way to support the channel. And it, you know, you don't have to sort of fund it yourself or anything. So if you can do that, it would be really useful to me. Um, so there we are. So anytime you watch my videos, if you can remember, I know it's a hassle, but just like open the Brave browser and then watch the video, it would help me a lot. So there we go. All right, so I'll get rid of that one. So this one, uh, I'm gonna analyze the trader again, but this this person who I'm gonna have a look at his, his profile, he's actually agreed to do an interview. Uh, now this isn't someone I've ever copied before, um, I've seen him on eToro for a number of years, actually, well, since I started, so 2016, late 2016. Um, he's agreed to do an interview. I think it's looking highly likely. haven't finalized something because I keep not replying quick enough because I missed the email. But it should be uh, later this coming week. Maybe we'll have uh, an interview going with this guy. So I thought I'd um, analyze his profile so that if any of you are following him or copying him, or just or want to ask him questions, you could leave questions in the comments and then I have some of your questions to ask him, you know. I'd have some things to ask him, but it's nice if, you know, it comes from you guys who are copying him and following or just want to know something about his trading style, or why he made certain decisions or whatever, all right? So the person is this guy. Now, I again with the name, Jeppe Kirkbond. I don't know if it's Jeppe or Jeppe Kirkbond. I'm in Malta, we say J, we pronounce it as yes, so I've got used to doing that. So forgive me if I'm wrong. Let me know if you know. If it, is it a soft J, yeah, or a hard J, J? I'm going to call him Yeppe. So Yeppe Kirk Bond, here we are. Um, so I'm just going to put it full screen. So Yeppe Kirk Bond, 4.9% uh, over the last 12 months. So this year, meh, hasn't gone that well. Uh, we, we'll analyze why and what's happening. 0.414 on the last trading day. I'll go down here uh, to his bit. So Yeppe Kirk Bond. It lives in the United Kingdom, um, risk score five, so he's sort of slap bang in the middle, um, as we've seen with that guy yesterday. I have invested on eToro since 2013, so that's a long time. He's been on eToro for a, a good number of years, you know, before me, before. Uh, so I've invested on eToro since 2013 with an average annual return of 36%. It's good. So over the time he's been, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, over those years, on average, 36% a year. If you copied back then for $1,000, you'd have $5,075 today. Nice. Uh, my background is in management consulting, advising some of the world's largest banks. I continuously analyze trends in markets, technology, politics, demographics, etc., and perform fundamental valuations and compare to prices. I maintain investments as long as I think there is a strong long-term opportunity. As I expect, the macro environment, overall big top-down environment, is shifting, you know. Uh, I make changes to the portfolio's broader asset class composition. So he's looking at the overall big, large macro trends and trying to shift the weight of his portfolio, what's in there to adjust, I believe. I recommend to copy open trades and make it a habit to invest 20% of your salary. So, it's a lot of money. That's a bold ask. 20% of your salary is a lot of money. But there we go. That's what he's asking. Although this depends on the individual situation. Right, obviously. 20% you know, of your salary is a lot of money though. Yeah, bet. Um, the minimum to copy is $200 to get all trades. So, you know, some people say 1000 2000 He's saying 200 which is the minimum um, that you can copy someone with. He says the minimum of 200 will get all trades. Maybe he's done the maths, I don't know if he's saying that, if this is old or this is new, but that's what he says. Um, so from that, what can we gain? You know, he seems to know what he's talking about, doesn't he? He seems to make sense. He's talking using words like macro. Um, he's uh, fundamental valuations is another sort of thing, which makes it sound, you know. If he's, I mean, if this is true, if he's sort of 
by background is in management consulting, advising some of the world, world's largest banks. I mean, it's probably something he's been around for a long time. It adds weight, it adds a certain authority, doesn't it, you know? Um, so there we are. It sounds professional, kind of sounds clean cut. A um, lot of money to, he's asking to invest, make it a habit to invest 20%, but whatever. Uh, he's got 78,170 followers. So 78,170 people are following his posts or listening to what he's saying. I guess he's picked them up. That's what happens if you're here since uh, 2013. Or just he, he, he posts maybe very useful stuff, and that's a lot of followers. Copiers, he's got 6,338. That's minus 145 in the last seven days. Over here, just above, we can see his sort of graphic, his chart, and you see that big red down line. I mean, that's a little one there. That's probably where, why people have sort of moved off a bit. We'll see. Uh, as for his posts here, uh, see if he's, you know, is he posting? Is he up to date? Is he sort of involved in the community? You know, um, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what that means. Let's translate it. Hi, looks like Yeppe. I'm now on the copy car and look forward to a good growth over time. That's nine days ago. He says, welcome aboard six days ago. Um, what do you do? It's crazy incredible. It's 11 days ago. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. Is that a good or bad thing? Um, it can be both. Uh, I mess, invest mainly in stocks that I think have a great future, but the price doesn't fairly reflect it based on valuation multiples. So he is replying 10 days ago. Uh, there's one there. Uh, maybe you will post something again. You've been very quiet for a long time now, and that's making me nervous 11 days ago. He said, 10 days ago, I generally respond to all questions, but yes, I have not written any posts in some time. I might do one soon. And he says, look forward to it. Thank you. 10 days ago. So there we are. Uh, maybe after the last two months, he went a bit quiet. I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it more. But there we go. So let's go to his stats on the stats page. So this year, uh, up in January, down in February, down in March, up in April, up in May, sort of up big and then down small, small, up small, up small. Fairly flat, down a little bit, up a little bit, up a little bit, up a tiny bit, down a lot, um, down a little bit. Fairly flat year. So 2017, at the end of the year, sorry, it's 2018. At the end of 2018, we can see that he's minus 4.3%. So not a big loss at all. Um, you know, there's people who've lost a lot this year. Um, they, they didn't sort of adapt their trading style. He's lost a tiny bit, um, but he's not up. Sort of flat, you know, up and down and up and down over the year. Uh, if we go down here to show more, we can see that, look, it goes all the way back to 2013. So we've got a lot of data to look at with this guy. And I can see a long time. And in that time, so 2013, 8.88%. 2014, minus 14.31. Not a huge loss, but it's a loss, but not huge. Minus 14. 2015, 22.37%. 2016, 81.07. 2017, a year where a lot of people did well, thanks to cryptos and stuff. But I don't know if that's what he did. 148.05 in 2017. And this year, as we saw, minus two, minus 4.3. And if you go to these, if you click on them, see, it does actually show you the chart for that year. You know, so we can see where he was doing well. I think there was a big crypto boom there. I'm not sure. So there we are. Um, that's his, his stats. I mean, that's good. We can see, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six years. Nice. You know, we've got some actual historical data and he appears to be doing well. There's two years which are down. One is the second year he was trading and it's only down by 14. And the other one is this year and it's only down by four. The rest are profitable, you know. That's looking that's looking good. That gives me confidence. I think, yeah, all right, cool, that's good. Um, go down here to the average risk scores uh, and we can see that they're green, you know. I was saying yesterday I like to see green. There's lots of green here. Apart from this month, Average risk five, max risk five. But all the others, you know, he's down here at three, max risk four, three, max risk four, 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 three, three. You know, lots of green. Uh, his max drawdown is uh, minus 3.6 daily, minus 6.9 weekly, minus 16.26 yearly. And you'll have seen some of the other an analysis videos I've done, and that's their kind of low, you know, and stable drawdowns. So, copiers, 6,338. So, minus 145 copiers in the last seven days. And I think we can see that this chart here might be tallying with um, these, you know, sorts of uh, his gains and losses. People generally, you know, if you're, if you're winning, people get on board. When you start losing, you know, they start leaving um, fairly quickly. It accumulates. So it's assets under management, 5 million plus copy assets under management. So he's got a lot of people uh, copying him and obviously a lot of money copying him. 
um, his total trades. All right, so bear in mind, this is since 2013. 134 total trades. I, that's since 2013. I mean, there are people who have like 6,000 in like, you know, a few years. So 134 total trades in 2013. This guy does not trade very often at all, from what I can see from that. 35% profitable, but his average profit is way bigger than his average loss. So you'd have to do the maths and work out if that's right. Yes, it is, because, you know, it's, it's more than double profit compared to the loss, you know. And so there we are. So he's profitable. Stocks, mostly stocks, bit of crypto, bit of commodities, bit of ETFs, bit of indices, never copied anyone. Trades himself. Um, 134 trades, so that's infrequent. Frequently traded, Bitcoin, only 12 trades for the most frequently traded thing that it wants to show here. Um, 8.33% profitable, but look at the profit compared to the loss. So he was on in that crypto boom, uh, I'd imagine, last year. He did. He held it, must have held it for quite a while and done quite well. Gold, he's not done well at all. Get off the gold, I, I, I did worse, um, probably. Additional stats, 2.53 trades per week, nine months average holding time, all right? So if you want to see someone quick trading and in and out and day trading, he's, he's no, he's not doing that. He's uh, nine months average holding time, active since the 22nd of the 7th of 2013, 45% profitable weeks. I really don't pay enough attention to this. I don't, not really, you know. Um, is that the same as this? No, it's not. Anyhow, so there we are. Uh... Portfolio, what's he got at the moment? Uh, at the moment, he's got uh, Facebook, Google, Bitcoin, Tesla, pharmaceutical company. Don't know what that is. Moet Hennessy, some drinks, a bank, Goldman Sachs, ExxonMobil. These are huge, industry-leading, massive stocks, aren't they? Let me just go back to his feed a second and just see if he says anything about, about that. Um, I don't know. Let's see, because I saw something in one of his comments. Um... Anyhow, I don't know about um, Fang. He mentioned the Fang stocks. So in his portfolio, he is he is going for the big ones. There's Apple, there's uh, Electronic Arts, EA Gaming. He's got one. Um, this is an ETF. ETF, as we said, is like a basket. So um, you don't bet on an individual share or an individual stock. You take one sector of the economy uh, or one group of stocks. You put them in a basket and you bet that overall the value is going to go up. You know, if you're buying it, or overall the value is going to go down if you're selling. So this one, I think, is the Emerging Markets, EEM, uh, yeah, composed of 23 emerging markets, which represents some 10% of the global economy. The EEM ETF gives traders exposure to, to countries that sometimes have less of a presence in global markets. So they're trying to represent those, those emerging markets. Um, there, okay, so the ETFs, uh, probably quite a wise one. Uh, I'm going to go back to this, so I'm putting it in full screen. So there we go. He's got, he's got quite a mixed bag, and they're all big names. There's BMW, different countries, different sectors. There's another ETF, another ETF. All right, there we are. So his charts. What's his chart looking like? Ah, so this is showing the last year. All right, so uh, let's go. Hold on, last year. There we are. So um, 2017, uh, he suddenly went up there in June 2017. Climbing, 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 climbing. And then by 2018, we see a big dip there. I'm imagining that might be cryptos going. And then um, we're going along and he's pretty stable, you know, this stable. He's not losing a lot, but he's not gaining a lot in 2018. This bit is all 2018. All right, so 2017, rampant rise. That might be the Bitcoin that we saw in there with that huge um, amount, 800% or whatever, 833% and other cryptos. Now here, that might be the January, remember January 2018, the huge crash in the price of cryptos, which has gone down subsequently all year. But he hasn't just kept going down. So whatever he did, he, he cut his losses and he, he has managed to keep his portfolio pretty balanced or pretty stable. He hasn't lost a lot of money um, from the cryptos just going down all of 2018. Let me go along to here to October. And we see a big drop in October. What happened in October, we had some of the major tech stocks, the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, um, Netflix, and Google. They call them FANG. So basically, most of the stuff, uh, the US stock market's value has come from those four, or I think five stocks, you know, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and I think another one, I can't remember what it is. 
And they've been responsible for lifting the entire US stock market and creating this kind of bull run. So for like, you know, seven years or whatever, anyone who's been in them has just been raking in the cash. But in October, uh, they suffered quite a bit and that could be it. So beginning this year, we see it going up here and then we see the stable. This is this year. So if you had started this year with 10,000, you would have now had um, 14,984, which is again though, that's like more of a percentage. So I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on there. Someone I'm sure will tell me. But there we are. This year, pretty stable, and then, boom, dropping in since October. He's been dropping. And I'm imagining that's because he's been holding on to some of those very big US stocks. But let's go have a look. So we'll go to his portfolio. Uh, let's go to the history. Um, no, let's go to his portfolio. Is he holding those? Yes, he's holding Facebook. And as we said before, he's got multiple positions. So he doesn't have one Facebook trade. He'll have, like, he has four positions, uh, 16th of the 5th. 30th of the 7th, 30th of the 7th, 29th of the 9th. This is when he bought them. So you see he's buying in gradually over time. I go back, go to Google, um, 35th of the 5th, 18th of the 6th, 18th of the 6th, 18th of the 6th. He's, he's been holding these for quite a while, you see. Um, these are long-term trades. Uh, Amazon's going to be in there, isn't it? There's Amazon. Boom. So he's got three of them, 15th of the 31st of the 5th, 31st of the 5th, and the 15th of the 8th bought these a long time ago and he's just holding them. Now, he hasn't sold those, okay? So, because he hasn't sold those, let's have a look at Amazon. Um, Amazon. So, he's had these since the 5th, January, February, March, April, May, I think it was since the 5th. Now, if we look at the chart, this is Amazon's page, the actual page for Amazon, the stock where you can find out about it. If we look at Amazon's chart, so, blah, 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 up, 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 look at this growth. Phenomenal growth. Made Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, the richest man in the world. And then, boom, October, ding, 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 down. You see, let's check for Facebook, which he also has. Facebook, um, Facebook's chart, August, October, blah, 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 Netflix, let's try Netflix. Um, Netflix, chart, August, October, blah, 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 down, down, down. And Google, just type in G and it will come up, we run the world. Same thing, so October, down, 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 And he's held them, he didn't sell them. So for whatever reason, he's had Amazon and Facebook and Netflix and Google, and they are, um, they're still in his, uh, they're still in his portfolio now. Um, so uh, let's see if he actually sold some of them. History, let's see if he got out. It's good to see how quickly when something goes the other way, people adapt and get out of them. So Ethereum, Ethereum, he sold a couple of cryptos, oil, gold, he's not done well in gold as we saw in his stats, you know, 0% profitability on gold. I was, I did many, many more. So um, no, so he didn't sell when it started to crash, when Facebook, Amazon, Netflix and Google, when the market started to correct, he didn't close any of those positions. He's holding them open, hoping that they'll go back up. Um, I don't know, I think a lot of people did that. They've been going up for such a long time. Um, but, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know, I think it's hard to react quickly for a lot of people. But that's, that's going to be where those losses have come from, you see. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, you know, they really all took a hit. He's still holding them, boom, October's going to be down. Uh, November's better, um, December's just started, he's at 0.11%. So, there we are on him at the moment. Can we copy him? because I keep forgetting to do this, to actually check if we can copy him. Yes, we can. We, there's that copy open trades button we were talking about, and there's, uh, there we are. Uh, so there he is, there's Jeppe Kirk Bond, or Jeppe, I don't know. And I'll be interviewing him, hopefully, uh, towards the end of, of this coming week. So write in your questions, you know? Anything you want to ask, as long as it's not, you know, inappropriate, not anything, anything, but um, let me know. And it was useful last time when I interviewed Jay and there were questions from you guys. It kind of formed a real good, because you all think differently and have different concerns, it forms like good chunks, which I can then sort of split the video into different bits as we address different concerns. So if you, any questions, please send them in. It will be uh, hugely useful. Um, that's it. That's the Epicat Bond. I hope you're having a great Sunday and you've had a good week. Been a bit of a weird week, some strange stuff on eToro about cryptos. Everyone got very upset about their new stop loss features, which I'll look into and maybe do a video about trading cryptos on eToro and how it's different from Binance and stuff. Because if, if I'm going to do pure cryptos, I'll still do it on Binance, is the truth for now, because the fees are better 
and because I can move them wherever I want to, there's no restrictions. And eToro still has restrictions, even though they've done that wallet, um, which quite a few people seem to be annoyed about at the moment, understandably. Anyhow, that's it. Have a great day. See you.